All right, everybody, welcome back to episode 13 of the podcast. Uh, some would describe that as an unlucky number, but I don't believe in that. I believe this is going to be a great episode for everyone. Uh, we've got a new guest joining. He's usually behind the cameras, making everything look super sharp. But Austin Watson is joining us today, so let's give it up behind the cameras. Come on. That was very loud. Very <laughs> proud of our audience there. That was exciting. And uh, we've also got Desi Garrison. I'm Bill Kite. Uh, you may have listened to us before. There's a chance of that if you heard the podcast. Maybe. So very excited that you joined with us. If, if you found the content, you know, really exciting or anything, you can like it, share it, and then also feel free to contact us if you do have any questions. So we're going to get rocking and rolling with this episode. So Desi, you actually listened to The Pastor on Sunday, and you went back and read extra bonus chapters. Did you not? I did. You did. So, and shockingly, you feel like God spoke to you through these verses. Yeah, it's almost like the Bible means what it says. No. (laughs) Yeah, so something cool that I noticed that I just want to kind of give like a a brief overview of the story as a whole from chapter 17 all the way to the end of chapter 19. And it, it opens up in 17 with this famine in the land and Elijah having to be fed by ravens. He goes and like hides by this brook, you know, and it's like almost like a, like a heaviness to the, the story, you know, the storyline is just like kind of a dark time. There's not much food, almost like a symbol of death, you know, Mm -hmm. like where there's no growth, there's death. I wonder why that's not a phrase for us. Like when times are bad, we're like, yeah, the ravens are having to feed me. Mm. Can we start that? Yeah, I mean, it is called a murder of crows. There, the, the audience probably can turn it off now. They've learned so much <laughs> in the first minutes. <laughs> I'm not sure what Bible verse that is. <laughs> but so, so it begins in a symbolic death in the country. Um, but then if we skip to, and then like all this stuff happens, which we're going to talk about. But then in the end, Elijah anoints Elisha as the new prophet and there's like a symbol of new life. There's a, a turning of a page there where Elisha is going to be the new prophet and Israel is actually turning toward God in that moment. And so all of these things that happen in the middle are just like meat to the story. But it's it's really a story of going from death into life. Mm. Um, and it that very thing happens multiple times within the story itself with the ravens and then Eli, Elijah heals the boy who dies, you know, the widow's son, and there's bread involved there. And then um, Elijah prays for rain, and finally the rain comes, and and then Ahab, like, has a meal. And at the very end of the story, Elisha has, he's plowing in the garden, and he um, gets anointed as the new prophet. And so he sacrifices his animals and then has this huge feast. And um, he, like, feeds all the townspeople. They have this big party. Um, so it's just so cool to me that it begins in death like that and then ends with a party. Which is far more exciting than the death, you know? Right. Um, so, yeah, so so what do, you, what do you feel like that kind of brings to the table when we start even getting closer and just talking about, you know, First Kings 19? Yeah, totally. So, you know, specifically, one thing that we camped out at was Elijah having— what he said was, I've had enough— And this is right after he's experienced all these miracles, you know, with the widow and the ravens feeding him. I mean, he didn't even have to do anything. The birds just brought him food. Like, how can you complain about that? And um, but now he's like running from Jezebel um, because she's got a contract on his head like she's about to kill him. And so what, what, you know, bring us into kind of some of the points that you talked about with Elijah saying, I've had enough. And the Lord saying, well, actually, Here's some bread. Yeah. You, you know, I, I think one of the things I resonate with Elijah on that is, like, I feel like I've been there at times in my life of I'm praying to God and just like, I, I, I've i tried to follow you and I, I'm just, I'm wiped out. I'm exhausted. I don't think I've got anything left in the tank. Mm-hmm. And and God's response ha- has just been to keep going. You know, like, he just, he just like, the, I hear you, but we have more to do. And he just keeps kind of moving. But, but he does give us what's needed. You know, and I think if we're honest as humans, we can disagree. Like, I like I wonder if Elijah had said, you know, the bread and water's nice, but I need, like, a steak. Or I need, like, a double cheeseburger if you want to send me on another doggone journey. You know? But God said, no, water and bread will do. And and so 
I think, you know, probably anyone in our audience right now can relate to me at least, or maybe you guys too, of we've had moments in our life where, man, it's just, we're exhausted. We've had enough. We're done. We don't know if we can keep doing this thing of following Jesus because following him has not been easy. And and God doesn't respond in the way we asked him to. You know, he, Elijah is very clear in his prayer. I've had enough and I hope to die. <laughs> and God says, I hear you, but here's bread and water. You know, that that's not a response to his prayer by mm-hmm. any means. Um, and, and so I wonder if anyone out there can relate to, one, being exhausted and tired and, and wanting to give up, and then two, having this feeling of, God, I don't think you heard me. Like, like was I not clear enough? Mm-hmm. You're not responding the way I thought you would. And and that can be frustrating at times, too. Yeah, and it's, it's probably not God being like, I, I'm not paying attention to that. It's more than likely him saying, you really don't know what you need, right. you know, but I do. And I have this journey for you to go on so that you can hear my voice, you know. And God calls Elijah out into the wilderness in order to get him away from all the noise, to get him away from everyone. Um, oh, and what's interesting is what that looked like was like a bad experience. And Elijah was running for his life. But in reality, the Lord is like calling him out there so that he can show him this thing and like speak to him in a gentle whisper. Yeah, I feel like like Elijah wanted him to take away the situation. Mm. Like he wanted to take away the price on his head. Mm. But instead he wanted to like change his heart, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, I think it's so cool the way that the Lord, like when we ask him to do something, like when we're struggling with a situation, like we just want him to change that situation. But instead of doing that, instead of changing the circumstance, he's going to, like, move us into a place where that like, our hearts will change, you yeah. know. Um, and that's so much more of a blessing, you know, even if it doesn't feel like it in the moment, you know. Totally. A hundred percent. And also, you know, I, I, we didn't get to talk about this in the sermon a lot, but it's interesting to me that, like, you, you did and you pointed out, like, he's seen two miracles happen, like fire fall from heaven, kind of miraculous. <laughs> <laughs> rain after he prays to end a year years long drought i mean mm-hmm. multiple years like not like three weeks kind of powerful like mm-hmm. you you've got to think man i feel like god hears what i say and then the very next chapter you're going i don't feel like god hears what i say and not only that the miracles don't sustain him mm-hmm. you've seen fire fall from heaven you've seen rain come in in a drought and it doesn't sustain him when it comes to his faith jezebel says i'm gonna kill you and the dude takes off running and I think as, as any of us, we need to slow down and go, miracles or seeing God do something is helpful to our faith, but it doesn't sustain our faith. You know, really what sustains our faith is that interaction with the Lord. And that's what God's trying to do. He's saying, for you to continue on what I've got planned for you, you've got to get alone and hear from me. Mm-hmm. Because fire, fall, fire, fire falling from heaven wasn't enough. You know, rain coming down in a drought wasn't enough, but hearing from me will be. And so he takes him away. And then, like you said, he hears that gentle whisper, and he continues on to do great things. Yeah, and my first reaction to that is, like, how prideful of a person am I to see Elijah, the freaking prophet of the Lord, like, see these miracles and that not be enough for him? But then I'm like, ah, you know, maybe I could skip my quiet time today and, like, not seek out the Lord's voice in this way or, like, you know, not be disciplined in a, a specific way, spiritually disciplined, um, and like expect to have the benefit of like that union with God that Elijah had in the first place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's uh, it's super neat too that like I, w- I wonder how many times in our lives like we have tough experiences and you touched on this a little bit Austin um it's like we want to get away from the experience when in reality like God might be using that to drive us closer to him which I mean if you read the Bible that's what happens all the time it's either you choose to be disciplined you know and and discipline yourself in a way that honors God or if you're in his flock he knows what's best for you and he's going to put you in circumstances where you're going to end up like closer to him Jonah, for example, he runs from God. And so God has him swallowed up by a big fish, you know, and brings him back to where he wanted him to be in the first place. Yeah, I mean, that's never something we're hopeful for. Like, I mean, being in the belly of a big fish probably was unexciting and and smelly. 
and dark, you know? And so <laughs> those situations, I think, change us, but I don't know if those are the kind of situations we ever, like, want to go back to in life. Like, I think if we've lived long enough, you go, I've been through some things that changed me for the better because I learned and, and accepted what God was doing. I just don't have to repeat that lesson, mm-hmm. you know? And, and I wonder for some people who are having to repeat lessons, if God's trying to say, I've been trying to say something and you're just not hearing me, mm-hmm. you know? Um, which kind of goes back to something that I would love for us to talk about is, is the idea of some of us who feel like we have heard from God and God does speak to us. But what about, you know, the listener or any of us out there who go, I don't know that I have heard God speak to me. You know, what would, what would you guys kind of talk about to encourage someone who, who does want to hear God speak? They're just not ever sure he has to them. Yeah. I mean, the first thing, you know, we, we talked about this a little bit before we came on and I was tempted to give advice on that. Like I'm Elijah, you know, but my, my advice is like, ask God to speak to you. Hmm. Uh, first and foremost, like, are, are we posturing ourselves in like a, a posture of worship and receptivity? Um, and for me, man, like a, a lot of times that looks like getting quiet and getting away, um, which is follows right along with what we're reading. You know, um, it, sometimes it takes getting away from all the noise in our life in order to create that space to hear from God. And, um, I, I don't know. My question is like, when is the last time that you went outside, went out in God's creation and were just in awe at that and with no agenda other than just hearing from God? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, this past week, you know, I was just driving, had to get to a meeting, you know, uh, in the morning and uh, just the previous day had just been a long day for me. And um, I was like, man, I, I just know I just need to connect with the Lord. Like, mm-hmm. Just to be intentional, not just like kind of think about him and go, man, God, I hope you have a great day. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll check in at some point. You know, I, I slowed down and uh, opened up an app that's been super helpful for me. And we were talking about before the podcast, but it's the pause app. Pause, P-A-U-S-E. We'll, we'll put it in the show notes. It's by John Eldridge. <clears throat> and it just kind of leads you through guided prayers. And man, I just needed that mm-hmm. in that mor- that morning to get the day going, um, and and so I would encourage people. I really do think God wants to speak to everybody. Like I don't I don't think He's got like select favorites. And He goes, Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to Desi, but you know, Philip, you're just on your own. I don't really have much to say to you. I, I actually don't think that's true. Like I think He God has made each and every one of us. God has given all of us a purpose, and if we'll submit to Him, He'll work in and through us. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I would encourage, you know, anyone, if they're having a hard time hearing from God, I would encourage them just to sit down and say, I'm going to read a chapter from Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John each day. I'm going to have a notebook open, and I'm just going to write down whatever verse sticks out to me, if a thought sticks out to me, and I'm just going to write it down. And I'm, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to read the whole gospel. You know, if that takes you two, three, you know, four months to do, however long, I think you're going to look back and go, my— I think God has been saying some things to me, you know, and, and then you start learning the vo- the sound of the voice of God, yeah. you know, and so I would encourage someone if they, if they need to like go very foundational, start from the fresh level, you know, that that's one way to do it. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. I think, I think both of those are like super solid ways to connect with the father and hear his voice. I, I think we need to spend time intentionally going out to isolate ourselves to, to just spend time with him. You know, and I also think obviously like the word of God, like inherently that's going to teach us something he's going to say, you know. Um, but I, I think oftentimes we find ourselves in this place where like we um, we say that we want to hear from God. But in reality, like we're not coming into it expecting that he's going to speak, mm. you know. And um, we've got a, a saying at the church um, that our expectation determines our encounter, you know. And was that right? It's mm-hmm. there, man. Okay. That's half of it, at least. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's in yeah. Our expectation uh, determines our engagement, and yeah. our engagement dictates our encounter. Yeah, and, and and so I think unless we come into it like, um, just expecting that God's going to show up and, and and you know speak to us, I think a lot of the times we're like coming in on the wrong foot. You know, um, not that he won't, because you know sometimes he will, but it, it's certainly helpful if we come into it like I'm opening God's word, like. I'm fully expecting that he's he's got something for me here. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's so helpful to come in with that attitude. Totally. 
Yeah. Uh, one more thing that I would like to point out too is like, are we taking care of our body? Mm-hmm. Um, because yes, we are a spirit that needs to connect with God, but we're in a body, yeah. you know, and like if you're staying up to 5 a.m. every morning and then trying to get in the word, like, you, you know, in the next three hours and then like work 40 hours, you're just not going to connect. Um, like it's just going to be hard mentally for you, for you to like focus and, and do those things. And like, um, I don't know, that's just an, an important thing to, to take care of our body in that way. Yeah, I think external factors, I agree with both of you, totally have an effect. You know, and I'm even, you know, we're talking a little bit about before the podcast as well. How loud is our life? Yeah. You know, especially in America. I mean, I think if you meet people, something they're always like, you know, I'm good, but busy. You know, and I think that's like the standard American response Mm -hmm. to how are you? I'm good and I'm busy, you know. And uh, John Mark Comer started a book that did a really good job. If you guys want to go read it, uh, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. I'm, I'm starting to go through it. But I do wonder if, the gentle whisper, you know, uh, you know, God talks a lot of time at that tone and at that pace, and we just blow right on by, <laughs> like we didn't, we did not hear it. And and I think about a story you shared with us several podcasts ago about, you know, your dad walked in the house and he smelled the sewer leak, but you didn't know it because it was gradual. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if some of us have got to a point where our life is like at a screaming pace and sound mm-hmm. level, and we haven't noticed because it's gradually got there. Mm-hmm. But it's also in correlation with we've gradually heard God less lately. Mm-hmm. And it's because of how the pace of life and the, the chaos of life around us has gotten to that level. Mm-hmm. And maybe we just need to take it take it back a little bit um, so that we can still be people who hear gentle whisper. Yeah, because if you don't, eventually you'll just be living in a poo house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And how often do we like wear busyness as like a badge of honor? Mm-hmm. You know? And like the Father just wants us to stand still for just a second. You know, I think of like toddlers like running around and like the kids or the parents are just like, please just sit still <laughs> and be with me. And like, so many times like parents are so happy when their kids are just like, like on the verge of going to bed and they're just like, like cuddling with them and they're like, just like laying in their lap. I think of um, uh, a good friend of ours, Anthony Zametti. I just like see him so happy when his daughter is like, just like resting against his chest, you know, um, not that he's not happy when they're running around all crazy, but like. You know, there's a time for both, you know, and I, I just think, like, how often does the Father just want us to, like, slow down for a second and just be present with Him, you know? Absolutely. And I love that you said that, like, that nearness, yeah. because that speaks to exactly why God chooses to whisper to us. Because in order to hear someone who's whispering, like, you have to get close to them. Um, and it's so cool that we serve a God that wants to be intimate with us in that way, you know, and not distant. And, and I think back, speaking back to the, how do we hear God's voice sort of thing? I think that God knows how we're going to interpret him as well. Mm -hmm. And as we grow to know him and actually Ephesians talks about the more that we, um, like read the word, the more we're going to like look like Christ and more we're going to, um, know him, you know, and, and get to know him and, and understand him, um, and so I think as your relationship grows, just like any relationship, you'll be able to have banter, you know, and, and get to know the way that you're interacting with him. And not only that, like you'll you'll know sometimes what they mean. Like I think sometimes like you were you were talking about earlier, like God talks to us how he made us. So like God knows like I need more direct, like I need like yes or no responses, like I like for him to ask me like a yes or no question. Like don't make me try to figure things out. Like just give me the option. You either follow me or you don't. You know, and I think because he's the one who's made us, like he knows how to talk to us in the most effective manner mm-hmm. for us to respond. Yeah. And um so that's why it's so key for us to learn his voice. Mm-hmm. You know, I think about sometimes um, you know, nowadays we there's so many podcasts or you know sermons or anything and and you kind of get to know the people who are on them because you hear their voice you hear how they talk you start to learn how they joke or or things like that and then and you almost feel like you know them you know and if that's because you spend enough time listening and and i think that can happen with us with with jesus you spend enough time in the in the word spend enough time in prayer like you begin to learn his voice and how he's talking to you yeah Man, that makes me think of this one time I got, I was in high school and I got paid to dog sit. And uh, so like the, the people actually wanted me to stay at their house. And um, so like when I was there with them, like everything was great. Like, oh, these dogs are so well behaved. Uh, but as soon as I stepped in the door and I needed the dog to do something, it would not listen to me. 
And I was like, what's happening? It's like completely different dogs, you know? Um, but the funny thing is like, I could say sit, I could snap my fingers, I could do it all I want till I was blue in the face. But like my voice was different than the voice of the owner, mm-hmm. you know? And like that owner, like when the dog heard that person's voice immediately. And the whole week I was there, it never changed. It never <laughs> listened to me. I, it was it was horrible. I never did it again. Uh, but as soon as the owner came back, the owner said, sit, and the dog listened. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's it, it's the same way, man. Like, um, the, like, we just need to know the Lord's voice, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's so good. Maybe we just need to to listen more. And, like, that dog wouldn't know his owner's voice unless he spent time with him, you know? And they were in constant communication. So it's so important. Um, yeah. So there's something I wanted to touch on. This is, like, kind of an aside. Um, but just speaking to the incredible, like, detail that Scripture goes into – like I just want to make sure that everyone hears this this thing that that stood out to me um, in the New Testament. Jesus asks his disciples, like, who do you who do they say that I am? Who do you think that I am? You know, mm-hmm. and someone goes, well, um, they say that you're Elijah, or some people say that, and he goes, well, Elijah's actually actually already come, and they killed him. And then the disciples, in quotations, you know, like the disciples then realized that he was talking about John the Baptist. And if you look at John the Baptist's life and you look at Elijah's life, it's incredibly overlapping. And um, just it's so cool to me that those hyperlinks are in there. Um, and, and we could do a whole another 45 minute podcast on just that. But um, it's, it's just super neat to me. And I wanted to point that out. So kind of like bringing, bringing the plane down here, um, Phil and Austin, what, what would you guys say is the one stand, standout thing uh, for the armory section, something that we can hold on to this week um, as we go forth? Do you want to talk about Bruce's quote? Sure. Yeah. Uh, what was his name? Bruce Wilkinson? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, uh, you brought up a great quote that really stuck with me during your message. It's, uh, uh, God doesn't uh, mumble, but then again, he rarely shouts. Um, and I, I think that was like so huge for me just because like I think throughout my life, there's been moments where like I've misconstrued like that idea to be that like God is trying to hide something from me mm-hmm. like, or that like, you know, he has this purpose for me, but I have to like, like dig into the bushes or like, like sift through the haystack to find like what his purpose or his plan is for me. Um, but I think that quote just like made it so succinct that like, God is so clear in like his purpose and his calling. Um, but I have to orient myself to be able to hear him. Um, like you were talking about earlier, there's like an intimate relationship that God wants for me to have. And if I'm not close enough, like I'm not going to hear it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think it was just like in- both encouraging and challenging to me, like to hear that quote, like, man, like God is being so clear and intentional with me, but like, I also have to hold it, hold up my like end of the deal, you know? That's Absolutely. Good. I, th- I think for me, the one thing to kind of take away or, or you know, put in the armor is is the remembrance that, like, God cares so much. Mm-hmm. Like, he made Elijah and put things inside of him that he wanted to bring forth to accomplish his purpose. Yeah. And, and he's done the same thing for you. Like, he's made you with a purpose in mind. And if you look at verse 19, how patient he was with Elijah. Yeah. Like, even in my mistakes or your mistakes, he's been so patient to try to get us to where we will do what he's looking for us to do. And, um, you know, I would just encourage the listener to, one, you know, kind of we talk, talk about just slow down, look look to listen to what God wants to say because he made you and he made you with a purpose and he wants to work in and through your life. And so I would just encourage the listener to, to be encouraged that the Lord loves you, he cares about you, he made you with a purpose and he wants to be not only just involved, but work in and through your life. Mm-hmm. Um, so just slow down to a pace where, where you guys can have that relationship and move forward together. Yeah. Heck yeah. This, this story is so good. Um, yeah, I feel like it's so applicable to wherever we're at in life. If we're Elisha in the end, like being anointed and like we're on a high right now <laughs> and we're throwing a feast for the whole town. Or if we're Elijah and we're running for our life from mm-hmm. Jezebel. And there's everything in between, you know. 
Like, are we seeing God do these crazy miracles? Or is he calling us into a wilderness by something? Like, is he driving us into a wilderness because we're scared of Jezebel? Mm -hmm. You know, something like this. So, like, wherever you're at as the listener, like, there's something in this story for you. And it's that Jesus is that bread that is being offered. Mm -hmm. And, like, there's life in that no matter what season it's in. So that that's kind of my takeaway is like if you're running for your life, like listen for the gentle whisper. Mm. If you're on the mountaintop, listen for the gentle whisper. And mm. and like Jesus is there to to feed you and nourish you in that season. So 100%. Mm. Heck yeah. Well, guys, we appreciate you listening. We appreciate Austin Watson coming from behind the camera Let's to in go. front of it. And uh, we appreciate you guys listening to us. Uh, we encourage you guys to share it, like it, uh, send us an email or comment in uh, if you got any questions or, or wants to give us some feedback as well. And uh, we just appreciate you guys joining us. We really do. Okay, thanks, guys. See you guys next time. <laughs>